So the converse of a conditional, a converse of the statement P implies Q, is going to be the statement where you reverse the order of the P and Q. You take Q implies P. And the most important thing to note from here is that this is not logically equivalent. In fact, often people in everyday life will confuse this and they think that P implies Q and Q implies P are going to be the same thing and they'll use them if they are the same thing, but they are not. We could write out the truth table for Q implies P and we could write out the truth table for P implies Q and they are going to be different truth tables. So let's try to see how this would work in the context of a specific example. So I want to take the conditional, if it's a dog, then it's a mammal. So we have here our P value, this is our P, if it's a dog, and we have here our Q, that's going to be, it's a mammal. And what we have is P implies Q for the top. Now, if I'm going to take the converse of it, we're going to keep the same sort of if-then structure, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the it's a dog and it's a mammal part, and we're going to be reversing them. So if it's a mammal, then it's a dog. This is going to be the statement Q is going to imply P. And of course, we think the first of these statements is going to be true. If it's a dog, then it's a mammal. That's just bought in by what is the properties of a dog. One of the properties of a dog is that it's going to be a mammal. A dog is a, a special case of being a mammal. But this statement down here, if it's a mammal, then it's a dog, this is, of course, false, all kinds of mammals that are not going to be dogs. So the big lesson here is that the, the statement or the conditional P implies Q and its converse Q implies P, they are not logically equivalent. Another statement that we can make related to our initial conditional is something called the inverse. And so we're going to say that the inverse of P implies Q is the statement not P implies not Q. Now, this is kind of like taking the contrapositive of the converse. Why? Well, we know that for P implies Q, we know that this is going to be logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. And then if I look at not Q implies not P, what I have up here for the inverse is the other way around. It, it's flipped the order. So what this thing really is, is going to be the converse of this, and this was the contrapositive. So the converse of the contrapositive. So we should therefore think, since the contrapositive does not change the logic, right? The, the statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent. So then the converse and the contrapositive of the converse, which is the inverse, those two are going to be logically equivalent. So our conclusion is therefore going to be that the inverse is logically equivalent to the converse. But importantly, logically equivalent to the converse, but, but not logically equivalent to the original statement, not logically equivalent to the original contrapositive. So returning to our familiar example, if it's a dog, then it's going to be a mammal. This is the one that has the form P, if it's a dog, implies Q, which is it's a mammal. If I want to look at the inverse of this statement, it's saying, if it's not a dog, then it's not a mammal. And so our sentence becomes, if it's not a dog, then it's not a mammal. This is going to have the structure, not P implies not Q. And indeed, if I try to reason my way through this sentence, okay, so if it's not a dog, then it's not a mammal. Well, what about a cat? A cat satisfies the property of not being a dog, but this conclusion is then a false because a cat is a mammal. So a cat has the property that the condition is true, it's not a dog, but that the conclusion is false. So this statement here is going to be false, and this statement here is going to be true. And so we get that the inverse 
and the original statement are not logically equivalent.